Over the past one year, there have been a number of factors weighing in on Rwanda's economy. The volatility of commodity prices, the change in doing business rankings and the global rates among others. Now in today's episode, we highlight where the economy currently stands and the sectors that have fast-tracked progress and GDP growth are moving forward. My name is George Ndurango. Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. Over the year, economies world over have been hit by the volatility in commodity prices and overall interest rates. The International Monetary Fund has however commended Rwanda's economy, saying it would show more resilience to shocks of the long term, regardless of individual sector cycles. Diversifying the export base and focus on bringing the nominal exchange rate down were noted as key factors to work on to make the country more competitive. Already this year we've seen some exchange rate depreciation uh, and we've seen you know, that they're really trying to uh, adjust policies to, to help deal with the shock in the short term. At the same time, they're really putting into place a wide set of policies to increase their resilience to shocks over the longer term. Rwanda has a fairly narrow export base and they're really actively working to diversify the export base, broaden it by bringing in foreign investment, and also looking at what they can, what they can produce here that they currently import yeah. to reduce their dependence on imports. If you look historically, in the past year, the exchange rate has depreciated fairly rapidly. Um, and maybe hasn't de um, depreciated as much as other countries in the region. But those countries have had much higher inflation. So they're, in fact, if we get a bit technical, yeah. uh, the real exchange rates had appreciated. Right. So there was room for nominal depreciation to bring that real exchange rate down and to yeah. make these other countries more competitive. Um, so in a sense, uh, Rwanda didn't need to depreciate as much. The private sector plays a crucial role in pushing Rwanda's numbers higher. This was vividly seen in the energy sector. Rwanda now hopes to expand to 563 megawatts of grid power by 2018 and may import an additional 450 megawatts from neighboring countries. We have a target of making sure that the access reaches 72% by, uh, by 2020, sorry, by, uh, yeah, by 2017, 2018. Uh, and we believe that this one is really uh, uh, going to be achieved, but of course, as usual, the energy takes a long time. We have several supply of energy. We have the hydropower uh, in the country. We have uh, the P2 power. We also have methane gas, and we have the geothermal, which we are trying to experiment. The, what we've done is that we wanted the private sector also to get involved, whereby uh, for the generation part, we know that the private sector is playing a leading role. And that's why for the, uh, for example, P2 power, there is a private sector involved. We are also having the methane gas, whereby even recently the 25 megawatts uh, is now coming on grid uh, by uh, Contour Global, which is a private company from the United States. But also we are having others being negotiated on hydro and also in other, area, on other forms of energy. We are seeing that uh, apart from those ones, we have the regional ones like the 80 megawatts, which is at the border with Tanzania and Burundi, the place called Rusumo, financed by the World Bank and ADB. We are now negotiating another 147 megawatts for the Rusizi 3, uh, which is the border with Congo and, uh, and Burundi. And at the same time, we are having negotiations on the big uh, hydro powers uh, that also are going to supplement our energy. And we are open to make sure that we can also import from the region. Uh, we had already signed an agreement with Kenya to see how we can import 30 megawatts, but we need to scale up uh, after uh, making sure that we harmonize the grid within the region uh, community. With a successful launch of the 4G internet, the government did not stop there. Using this as a pivotal point, the goal is to now have 95% of the Rwandan population fully connected to 4G LTE. When you look at uh, areas where Rwanda has now uh, improved very, very significantly, ICT, embracing ICT technology, has been playing a very significant role for this to happen. In my view, uh, the current focus on uh, uh, ICT in Rwanda and uh, the current program actually to modernize all the government processes to make them online 
I'm convinced going forward this will continue to impact positively on uh, the Rwanda ranking on different uh, uh, indicators. We started the vision, uh, the ICT vision, the one that we call the Nikki plan. And as you know, the first five years was really quite a big sensitization so that we all understand that we need IT in every sector. And then the next five years, uh, we started as a government, a program where we had to put infrastructure in place. And uh, now for the last uh, five years, we've been working with uh, Korea Telecom for the installation, but now we are working with other, uh, another Korea company uh, to make sure that this time, now that we have the infrastructure, how do we benefit from this infrastructure? So that's why we are moving, working together with other telecom to uh, 4G LTE. And already uh, some of the key towns like Chigari are already, uh, uh, the, prog the, the plan is already uh, almost completed. And because of this and the investment in the telecom, we are seeing already that the penetration is quite very high. As we talk now, the penetration is around 75.5% where we have 8.6 of the Rwandans actually actively uh, subscribing to the, uh, to the mobile phones. So, the, and the IT is contributing to 3% of the GDP, 3% of GDP, and is also being applied almost in every area. Implementation of programs within the East African community have been fast-tracked over the year. This progress has led to, among others, infrastructure and energy-related programs streaming across the border. We've made a quite impressive progress in the last eight years, really. Uh, looking at the customs union, uh, the customs union, a number of achievements uh, that uh, I think we can be proud of uh, in the last eight years. Uh, a number of trade facilitation measures have been put in place. Uh, we've made it much easier uh, within the East African community for goods to really move across borders. Uh, we, we are today, today we have a single custom territory. Uh, we also have a, a system that really enables all agencies that are involved in uh, clearance of goods uh, to use just one single system with uh, a single window system. So this cuts down on, the, uh, on time, it cuts down on the number of procedures that are required. So pretty appreciable when it comes to uh, really the free movement of goods. Uh, I think also in terms of the free movement of people, uh, we've, uh, we've, we've really gone to uh, an extent that uh, we can appreciate today in terms of the free movement of people within the ESC. Um, uh, ESC citizens uh, don't require visa, of course, to move from one to the other ESC country. Today we are in one network area, not only uh, uh, Kenya, Uganda, uh, Rwanda, but also South Sudan. Uh, and we are aiming to really becoming one education area as well. And all that, of course, is pointing to one thing, is that by working together, pulling our resources together, putting together the talents that we have, uh, we are making our individual countries much more attractive, much more attractive for investment, but also we're making our individual countries much more competitive. In 2010, Rwanda earned $67.8 million for minerals. In 2015, although the target was set at over $290 million, this was not achieved. It, however, posed a challenge to the mining industry to streamline policies and put more emphasis on what has turned out to be one of the most promising sectors in the country. So for this financial year, our target was to reach uh, $293 million US dollars. So the, that's the year ending uh, June 2016. So it's the target we are focusing on. It will not be easy to achieve considering the current uh, global prices. Markets have fallen for about 40 to 50 percent. So this has affected us a lot. But we have maintained our targets. We kept them uh, expecting that maybe the conditions may improve. And our focus is to increase in productivity, uh, increase in the number of volumes that we put out. Also, we are focusing on value addition so that those two measures can help us cope with the price fluctuating. But in any case, if the prices continue to decrease or if they remain at today's level, 
it will be very hard to achieve our targets. All in all, according to key industry leaders, Rwanda's economy seems to be on course with intended targets. The sustainable development goals highlighted by the UN globally are among the key indicators of this overall growth. Actually, for the sustainable development goals, after the approval by the Heads of State Summit in New York, Rwanda has moved on actually to come up with the whole entire plan of how to domesticate the 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, Rwanda already was uh, one of the countries that was selected in terms of pilot, where we pirated in terms of the capacity building and also on the governance. Those documents uh, will be available soon. It will work with the UN uh, trying to see how really uh, successful uh, implementation can be. And now we are coming up with a document. We are working together with all the stakeholders on the roadmap for domesticating uh, the uh, implementation uh, of the Sustainable Development Goals. But also you know that uh, with the Center for the African Sustainable Development Goals that will monitor all the indicators will be located here in Rwanda. And so that will be an opportunity for Rwanda really to make sure that uh, we lead by example and we start early enough. Already uh, we've started preparations and soon we'll be coming up with a clear framework on how we intend to domesticate the SDGs and how we intend to uh, implement uh, the goals in line with our vision, but also in line with the strategy that we also, that already have. A question was asked, what do we intend to do going forward? Look, over the last uh, uh, seven years uh, of uh, steady uh, improvement on, uh, uh, in this ranking, as well as the improvement in our doing business climate, it's been because the government takes it seriously in partnership with the private sector. So every year, uh, we look at what can we do better in our business climate in general, what are some of the reforms that needs to be implemented, and we bring on board many of the partners represented here to, to implement the reform agenda. It's a, it's a priority for the whole government uh, because we, we value the private sector and, uh, and making it easy for, for, for private sector to operate in our country. And so we are going to do just the same. And there we have it, an overall look at the sectors favouring progress in Rwanda's fast-paced economy. That's all we have for today and for the year. We appreciate you staying with us as we touched on cross-cutting topics across the entire 2015. On behalf of the Doing Business in Rwanda team, videographer Atulinda Allen and editor Emilian Gustav Nshizirungu, thank you for staying with us. My name is George Ndirango. We'll see you in 2016. Keep it CNBC. Africa, first in business worldwide.